and the world like that. Today we're going to talk about weight and balance. That's important because if we got too much weight in the tail, the airplane pitches up. And if I get too much weight in the nose, oh yeah, the airplane can pitch you over and all the stuff gets them out of the floor. And if I don't have the balance exactly right, heaven only knows what's going to happen to the airplane. Do you remember when we used Newton's second law, force equals mass times acceleration, to determine my weight? Well, actually, what we were measuring is the force I exert on the Earth. And likewise, according to Newton's third law, the Earth exerts the same force back on me. Well, what if we use two scales instead of one? And I put a foot on each scale. Well, I have 75 pounds here and 75 pounds here. Adding them together, I get the 150 pounds. So what we're really measuring is the force I exert on the Earth where I come in contact with the Earth. That's how we weigh an airplane. We put a scale underneath each wheel, add the weights together, and get the total weight of the airplane. And that's pretty simple. But determining how that weight is distributed over the airplane, that's a little bit more difficult. The weight of a plane is distributed in various places. Some have one engine in the nose, while larger planes have engines on the wing. Some carry fuel only in the wings, others carry it all over. If I wanted to lift the plane by a single cable, where would I place it? I'd want to keep the plane relatively level when doing this, otherwise all the people would fall towards the nose or tail. So what I really need is the balance point of the airplane. On an airplane, the balance point is called the center of gravity, or CG for short. Instead of using a cable to lift the plane, we know lift is created by the wing. Therefore, it stands to reason, the weight must be concentrated where the wing lift is located. Knowledge of the CG location is critical for stability and control of an airplane. Let's be sure we all know what we mean by the word control. It's the ability to generate movement through the application of forces. So on occasion, I've leaned back on my chair, but if I lean back too far and can't control the chair's movement by shifting my weight, well, you get the idea. That's the same basic principle we use to control an airplane. Simply stated, the movement of the airplane around the center of gravity is controlled by surfaces on the wing and tail. For a given speed, it is the size of these surfaces and how much they are moved which determine how much force is created to control the airplane. If the surface is too small, not enough force is created and the airplane won't respond to inputs. If the surface is too big, we can get too much force created, which can lead to over-controlling. Here you can see how over-controlling can get a pilot's attention rather quickly. So, so determining the size of a control surface all begins with determining the center of gravity location. There are two ways of determining the center of gravity for any irregular shaped object. And believe me, I've seen some really irregular shaped airplanes. To help demonstrate one method, we're going to employ one of the flight test engineers here at the school, Al Wallace, to show us how. Al? All right, what you see here is an irregularly shaped piece of sheet metal, and there's holes all over the place here. We can use a little hook anywhere uh, among any of these holes we like and hang the piece of sheet metal. Now, the center of mass hangs directly below the pivot point here, somewhere along this line. To find out what that line is, we can employ a simple carpenter string. Just hook it right there at the same pivot point, and then Mark is going to hang that down straight, and we'll try to stop it from oscillating. And Mark, I'll just squeeze it in place there, and if you'll snap that string, voila, a line saying that this is exactly the vertical line uh, down from the hinge point. Now, we can go to any other of the holes drilled in here and do the exact same test. So I can go over here to this corner, take it, and once again, the center of mass hangs directly below the pivot point. Let's find out what that line is. And we'll let that thing stop oscillating. Okay, Mark. Now, according to the theory, no matter which angle we look at it, no matter which hole we drill, that center of mass will always hang below the pivot point and it'll always end up right there at that cross. So to prove that that's the center of gravity, I'm just going to take my thumb, put it right there on that spot, 
and hold it. Voila, the center of gravity. I wonder if we can do that with an airplane. I don't think so, Mark. Well, in order to figure out how to calculate the center of gravity of an airplane, let's go back to the playground and start there. <laughs> Hi. Most of you have ridden a seesaw at one time in your life or another. And you remember how if the guy at the other end didn't weigh pretty close to what you weigh, the board would tip. If you weighed more, the board would tip towards you. If they weighed more, it would go towards them. So how did you balance the board to make it enjoyable? Well, the heavy person can slide towards the pivot point, or the lighter person can slide away from the pivot point. That way, the forces would be equal. We do basically the same thing with an airplane, only instead of shifting people around, a lot of times we'll shift fuel or cargo. In physics, the length of the board on each side of the pivot is called an arm, and the pivot point is called a fulcrum. I place a weight, or more correctly a force on one side, then I must multiply the force times the arm to get what is called a moment. This gives us an equation that can be written as a moment, is equal to the force times the arm length. Only when the opposing moments are equal will the board remain level. Ah, Newton's third law at work again. 